Hey everybody, welcome back. Well, I am sharing my August favorites with you today and I have some beauty products, some hair, some TV shows, and some books. So first off, I want to talk about a nail polish and I actually meant to talk about this in last month's favorites and I totally forgot. I was kind of rushing around that day and completely forgot. I did share this on my Instagram though. So be sure to follow me on Instagram. I'll put my name right here. I love this polish. I'm definitely going to buy some more shades, but this one color in particular I wanted to talk about. Now, of course, I don't have my nails painted today. This is by London Town, and they actually sent me some polishes a couple of months ago. And I was like, you know, do you want to try them out? Yeah, sure, because this color in particular caught my attention. I love this color. I've had it on my toes a lot, which I still do right now. Um, but I just keep reaching for this color because the formula is amazing. It's thin, but not streaky, which I love that because a lot of times if it's thin, it's kind of streaky, or even if it's thick, you might get streaky and I can get away with two coats. No problem. This color is like Briol Briolette. Um, it is a very light kind of, it almost has a slight shimmer to it, but you really only see it like if you're out in the sun. So don't let that scare you away. Sometimes it pulls lavender and sometimes it looks like a milky white pink, which you know I gravitate towards. Not only do I love this color, but because the formula is so nice, it's like I don't mind doing my nails. Cause you know, sometimes we love those colors, but like the formula is terrible. So we don't look forward to doing our nails. That's how I can get, but I absolutely love this. And I just keep reaching for it again and again. So they also have like a nail hardener and base coat. And I believe some of this, I'll put where you can get it below. I know Anthropology, Neiman Marcus on the London Town website, but again, I'll put it below. And then this color, Mauve Over, I'm looking forward to trying that one. That one's really pretty. I'm still into the like lights and pastels for summer. I don't get into the dark until fall, but this one I'm really looking forward to. I'll probably put this on my toes. It's called Lady Luck. And it's just a really pretty, like really deep burgundy color. But I'm telling you the formula of these, I absolutely love. And they also have a gel top coat, which makes it last about I don't know, I can get about two weeks, again, because of the formula. So I'm really liking this. They have a lot of colors. So let's stick with makeup. What I have on my eyes and what I've been wearing. It's one of those palettes I just reach for every now and then, but I heard they're discontinuing it. So it is the original Urban Decay Naked. Mine actually looks still almost like brand new. I mean, there's no like hit and pan on anything. Um, so basically what I have for my eye look today is I have the color Naked. I have the color Buck, those both in the crease. And then I have a little bit of Dark Horse in the corner and then um, Virgin all over. So I don't know if they're actually discontinuing or if it's just like a hype to get everybody to purchase it again, but I love this palette. I don't use it a ton anymore, but um, this and the Naked too, I just reach for every now and then. I have my palettes here in this middle drawer and when I open it up, it's like, you know what? Sometimes it just calls me <laughs> to use it and it's kind of been um, going along with that same look I've been doing for months with just, you know, a wash of color over the eye and then a really blown out matte uh, crease, which I kind of do the same looks all the time just switch it up, you know, cause I just know what works for my eyes. So something new though, and I have Stephanie Marie to thanks for this, um, is this by Marc Jacobs. This is a game changer. Now I have the original gloss in this in Sugar Sugar. This is the color. She had shown this in one of her videos a while back. I don't remember if it was like a favorites or something, but I went out and bought it right away. So here's the original. And you can tell they look really similar in the packaging. So I like this gloss from Marc Jacobs, but it always looked a little dull on me. It's almost a little too beigey for me. This is the same color, but I'm telling you like the formula and the color just looks so much more flattering. The only thing gets me is the packaging because every time I usually like do it the wrong way. So here it is when it comes out. And so it just looks like a gloss, but it's in like a tube. So this is what they call it. And again, this is Sugar Sugar. Um, it's the Enamored Hydrating Lip Gloss Stick. Again, they say the color is the same, but I think it's a little different. So 
I don't know if you'll be able to see. There is the gloss. And see how pretty and shiny that is? That's this one. Gloss is this one. But these are so hydrating and nice. I'm going to check out other colors. I did not see them when I was in the store the other day, at least in my store. I kind of have a small store. But I'm definitely going to check out other colors because they are very hydrating, very pretty on the lips. And I just, they're so nice and comfortable. So thank you, Stephanie, for showing this. I absolutely love this. I am wearing it today. I am wearing it over... I'm wearing it over Laura Mercier Plumberry Liner. So I just have all my lips filled in. And I was wearing this on um, my recent Instagram picture too. Because I often get questions there, uh, what I'm wearing on my lips. So anyway, Plumberry with this over it, love it. Let me just mention a little fail. Jump right in here with a little bit of fail. So if you follow me on Instagram, you saw where I picked up some things from the Milani website. I had wanted to get these for so long because most of you know my favorite all-time blush, I mean, I just reach for it without even thinking, is the Milani Romantic Rose blush. Love it. Just bought a new one not too long ago. I'm wearing it today. So I wanted to pick up these two. I don't feel like the formula is as great in these. They're nice, um, and I am continuing to use them and try them out with the colors, but so far, the full size is hands down the best for me. This. This is the Soft and Sultry palette from them. I got this on their website, if I didn't mention that. Look at those colors. This is almost like a perfect palette for me. Um, love, love these shades. I was a little disappointed in the payoff. These first two rows here are very, very light, and I feel like they almost all look the same on the eye. Um, the deeper colors here are nice. I have not used the black. I don't really use black anymore. It's just a little too harsh for me unless I'm setting a top liner, which I hardly ever wear anymore. But gorgeous colors, but for me it was just, okay, I'm going to continue to try to work with it. But again, there wasn't as much color payoff as I was hoping. Um, it's weird because when you swatch them, I feel like they swatch... Um, you know, fairly decent, but you know, again, just kind of okay. By the way, usually things like that, a little updates and things, I've been putting on my Instagram, so be sure to follow me there. I'll like do it on stories or something, just when it's something quick like that. So let's talk about this. I don't even know what, it's L'Oreal Sublime Glow Daily Moisturizer Plus Natural Skin Tone Enhancer. I got the one for medium skin tone. Again, I meant to talk about this last month. I've been using this all summer long and it just gives a really nice sheen and a glow to your skin. So I do think it's supposed to give like a slight, you know, after three days or something, you know, kind of give you a little bit of self tan. It's not, you know, a huge difference. But what I love is it just makes like your chest, your arms, your legs, that little bit of sheen out in the sun glow. Now, just as a warning, when you are out in the sun, you will see direct sunlight, tiny, tiny little micro shimmer. Inside, I don't see it at all, but outside I do see it once in a while. So if you don't like that, just beware. But I really like this, it has a nice scent. The packaging is slightly messy because it is a really thin consistency lotion but I really like this and I've been using it a lot. And again, forgot to mention it last month. This is something I've actually used for years off and on when my hair is just a little damaged from, you know, bleaching it and all that. But they have a new packaging. You can see how much I've used of it. It's like one of those dual packaging, so you kind of need to squeeze it in the middle to get both. I don't like that. This used to be in a tub as like an actual hair mask and I loved it. So they've just repackaged it but I have still been using it um, because my hairstylist recommends this one. But something new I tried was the shampoo that goes with it. So this is the Redken Extreme line for distressed hair. And basically why I started using this, my hair was just, I was heat styling it too much and it was just really dry there for a while from some other things. And it just needed to get back in better condition. So I started using this. I'm telling you, I notice a difference within like a week of using this. And I wash my hair about two to three times a week, about I'd say every other day I try to. Sometimes I can push it two days in between. So between these two, and again, I've always liked this, but I really think using this has made a big difference as well. Um, my ends can look a little bit 
scraggly if I don't smooth them with some kind of hot tool. If I just dry them with the dryer, they always look a little bit fuzzy, but I've noticed like around my hairline where I had some breakage and just everything looks a little bit smoother. It looks a little bit healthier. So it doesn't take long if you have uh, damaged hair, whether it's bleached or from whatever reason to use these two and you'll really start to see it uh, getting back in better condition. So again, love these two and really wanted to mention um, this in particular. So let's get into the TV shows. My husband and I have been binge watching Riverdale. I don't know how many of y'all out there are watching it. Season three is going to start in October. We just started season two on Netflix. I'd say we're about five episodes in. When we first started watching it, it totally gave me like old school Pretty Little Liars vibes. And even a couple episodes right now in season two, I'm like, yeah, this reminds me of Pretty Little Liars sometimes. It just has that like whodunit vibe, a lot going on, trying to find out. You know, it's like every episode, a lot happens, it seems like. It was funny because um, I was just talking to my husband the other day about how season one didn't have as many episodes as season two. And I was like, it seems like we are farther along in seasons than just one because so much has happened from like the first couple episodes to the last couple. So much happens in each episode, it's crazy. So if you guys like that Who Done It, it is based off of the Archie comic series, meaning their names are based off of that and just kind of some old school vibes once in a while, but yet it's darker than that. It's like a modern day twist on that. And I know it's really popular. I think they've won like a lot of awards and stuff like that recently. But I like it because I love that like what's gonna happen? Like who done it? Something happened and everybody's trying to figure out what happened kind of thing. So loving that. Again, catch up on Netflix so you're ready for season three in October. Big Brother. Where are my Big Brother fans at? I know some of us chatted on Instagram a little bit about this a couple weeks ago. Leave me a comment below who is your favorite and who you want to win. It has been for me for several weeks, Tyler. And I had mentioned this on Instagram and so many of you agreed that at first, you know, one, it takes me a while to get warmed up to everybody. I've mentioned that every season we've ever watched. At first, I'm like, oh, I don't like anybody. And I do think the last few years, the cast has been very boring compared to, you know, years past. But I was like, oh, Tyler, you know, like he's a snooze fest. He's not going to do anything. Well, he's totally surprised me. So I'm definitely a fan of Tyler. I've kind of been a fan of that side of the house early on just because I feel like the other side... They just don't have their act together. It's like, have you never watched this? And they claim to like know what they're talking about. I feel bad for those people because like they're gonna go home and watch this and realize how they didn't look that bright on TV. So anyway, leave me your favorites below. So books, I feel like I'm forgetting one, but I just finished, um, not, I feel like I finished one in between there. That's why I feel like I'm forgetting. If you guys follow me on Goodreads, okay, I knew I was forgetting one. I had to get my Kindle. If you follow me on Goodreads, then I put in there what I've read, what I'm reading, you know, kind of rate it and stuff. That link's always listed below. I guess I didn't have this in there. So I just finished not too long ago, then she was gone. That book was kind of boring for me until about 30% into the book or so, maybe even more. And then it started picking up and I was like, oh, okay, this is a good book, you know? I'm not very good at describing things I don't, without, I don't want to give it away, but basically, their, her, this woman's daughter disappears. They don't know why. I'll just list it below and y'all can read the description. So what I'm reading right now is The Last Mrs. Parrish. And again, that book did not, it was very boring, I thought. I don't know, if a book doesn't suck me in right away, I've had books like that that then they end up being really good, but the beginning is just like dragging on. So I'm probably about 65% in that and it's just now getting really good. And I could kind of foresee a twist coming about. Um, so that one is good. I'm sure it's gonna have a good ending. Um, and then before that, I read The Woman in the Window. That was really good and had kind of a good twist too. Um, stay with it because at first that one's a little like, what in the world, you know? It's funny, it's like, I feel like I'm drawn to books like that and I find myself you know, into it and then I don't pick it up for a while because I kind of got bored. And then once I really dive back in, it's like, oh yeah, this is good. So 
check out those books if you guys like the kind of things I read. I always like a little bit of mystery, a little bit of like something happened, we don't know what happened, things like that. So also let me know in the comments below what you guys have been loving this month. If there's any new products you think I would like or need to try out or especially any books, any books or TV show recommendations, I would love to know. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any future videos. I'd love to have you back. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.